Urban and community planning has a storied history in Canada, one that now spans, at least formally, a full century, and there is much to celebrate about planning's history in Canada. However, it no doubt has a complicated history too, particularly as this profession relates to the theft and appropriation of Indigenous lands and territories. The country of Canada, the very idea of Canada, was only possible because of this. Urban planners and other related professionals began constructing houses, creating communities, and establishing villages, towns, and cities on this land without regard for how it was acquired. Later, cities were transformed in the name of urban renewal without regard for many racial minorities. This is notably seen in the demolition of the black communities of Hogan's Alley in Vancouver and Africville in Halifax, though there are other examples. Now this is not to suggest that the history of the planning profession is steeped in irresponsible decisions, nor that the positive examples of planning in Canada are drowned out by these negative ones. But the CIP's policy on planning practice and reconciliation, for example, show how these deep and often historical issues continue to matter today. While it may seem unusual to begin a celebratory video with stories like this, as planners, this is our collective history, and this is what we learn from. It's what we have learned from, what we will continue to learn from, and understanding this part of our history is how we better ourselves, our practice, and our communities for all people. And our communities have become better, largely because of the planning profession. Even with more modern health concerns, urban quality of life has continued to increase exponentially. And it is here, in the idea of planning for quality of life, that I believe planning's future is the most interesting and exciting. It's interesting and exciting because it truly engages people about what quality of life entails. What does it mean and what does it look like? Or what should it look like? These are, to me, planning's most fascinating questions and they are increasingly being considered in issues relating to all sorts of land use planning, social planning, parks planning, and community planning, among many other types. The ultimate question that planning should strive to answer is simple in its brevity, yet undeniably complex in its diversity. How do we plan for quality of life? This is undoubtedly a team effort. It requires an array of different kinds of planners working in tandem on complicated issues. It is also highly contextual. What increases the quality of life in neighborhoods of a big city likely won't have the same effect on suburban neighborhoods, smaller towns, or rural areas. But to start, much recent research has shown the importance of social connectedness to one's neighbors and neighborhoods. And by planning on a human scale, by introducing social elements and connectivity into our everyday built environment, planners stand capable of making astonishing contributions to people's quality of life. We may all make these contributions in different ways, but this is why I'm studying to be a planner, and I hope why you have ultimately become planners too.